Hi guys, happy Friday! For this episode is a continuation of our trip to Denmark. Also, I have to clarify about my first episode that the Tivoli Garden is the second oldest amusement park in Denmark and then the third oldest amusement park in the world. Denmark is a Scandinavian country comprising the Jutland Peninsula and numerous islands. It's linked to nearby Sweden via the Oresen Bridge. Copenhagen, its capital, is home to royal palaces and colorful Nivan Harbor plus the Tivoli Amusement Park and the iconic Little Mermaid statue. The Odense is a writer Hans Christian Andersen's hometown with a medieval core of cobbled street and half-timbered houses. We stay in downtown Copenhagen, it's very accessible to public transportation and also there's a bike rentals around the place. The mermaid is a bronze statue by Edvard Eriksson, depicting a mermaid becoming human. The sculpture is displayed on a rock by the waterside at the Langelini Promenade in Copenhagen, Denmark. It is 1.2 meters tall and weighed 175 kilogram. Opening date was August 23, 1913. Why the Little Mermaid Copenhagen is so famous? The original fairy tale was written by the Danish author by the name of Hans Christian Andersson and Carl Jacobson was not only fascinated by the ballerina but also with the Little Mermaid story. When he gifted the statue as a tribute to the city of Copenhagen, soon enough it became an icon representing the city. Did you know the statue has however been moved once to Shanghai? to be displayed in the Danish Pavilion at Expo 2010 from May to October that year. One of the things that Little Mermaid statue is famous for is actually the number of times that it's been vandalized. Some of these occasions has been politically statement but some have been simple prank or out of the no identified reason at all. This include 1964 decapitated, 1984 arm cut off and returned two days later, 1990 attempted decapitation, 1998 actual decapitation with the head returned anonymously to a TV station, 2003 blown off the rock and left to float in a harbor, 2006 covered in a green paint and left holding an adult toys, 2013 Baklava put over her head and signed added saying pre-riot, covered in red paint Message Denmark defend the whales of the Faroe Island written on the ground in front of her 2017. 2017 covered in blue paint two weeks after the fierce occurrence with Vefi Abdul in Danis. 2020 her rock was painted with a free Hong Kong message. 
2020, her rock was painted again with the message Racist Fish, with sticker added to her body. There are also occasions where she's been dressed in the sports shirt of the Swedish or Norwegian soccer team, a particularly hilarious attempt at vandalism when you consider their rivalries, especially Sweden with Denmark team. There are many mermaid statues around Denmark, but this little mermaid is the famous one. Herovre på jeres højre hånd ligger den gamle børs i København, som er bygget under Christian den 4. i årene fra 1620 til 1640, og som især er kendt for spiret med... Den kunne make it. I just want to warn you, people pee on these bridges when they're drunk, and they never work. Oh gosh. Don't smell like it though. <coughs> That's what smells good. <laughs> <laughs> Exchange of Copenhagen built between 1620 and 1640 by Christian IV, the most famous king in Danish history. I'll return to him later with more stories about him. This building is especially famous for the uh, spire with the four entwining dragon tails. Uh, back then, they believed that putting dragons on the roofs of buildings was a fire precaution. Now today, we would of course call that superstition. But this is actually the only old building in this area that never burned. So you might want to consider putting some dragons on your roofs. Okay. Next. Bank of Denmark over here, designed by architect Arne Jacobsen, who outside of Denmark is more famous for his furniture design. You might have come, come across some of his chairs. This building was finished in 1978. Unfortunately, he died in 71, so he never saw it finished, but it's considered one of his masterpieces. House is from 1750. 
And back then, the royal family lived over in Christiansborg Castle. They wanted something pretty to look at from their windows, so they asked for this nice facade with the great, with the gates and the symmetrical windows. Then they ran out of money during the building process, so they asked the architect if he could please save a few bucks on the backside of the building. So please notice the difference as we sailed by. The backside could not be seen from the castle, so that didn't matter so much. I like to in a little piece of a beskyttet mod større overfisk. Så det er for at sikre mere uh, biodiversitet i Københavns Havn, flere fiskearter, der kan leve her. We are sailing over another environment project. We have a lot of those in Copenhagen. This is one that Strømmer, this company, has together with WWF. We call them fish kindergartens. Uh, and they are crates filled with oyster shells where small fish can swim in and get something to eat and get protection from larger predator fish. So it's to secure more biodiversity in the harbor. But it's also a little tradition when you sail under the sea to give each other a little kiss under the sea. So if you see that humor, so it's just a little bit. We'll be going under the inner harbor bridge, or as we commonly call it, the kissing bridge. It, when it opens and closes, it looks like a kiss, but it's become a tradition since it's opened in in 2016 that people kiss when we sail under the kissing bridge. Aww. So if you're in that mood, now is the time. But remember these days to secure consent. Uh, Has Christian Anderson lived down here for 20 years of his life? Some of his famous fairy tales are written in the houses down here in Newhouse. Then you see here the new playhouse from 2008, part of the Royal Theatre, uh, designed by architects Lundgaard and Tranberg. When they opened up uh, the playhouse, they opened with a production of Shakespeare's Hamlet, as you might know, Hamlet was a Danish prince who resided in the castle of Kronborg, 45 kilometers north of Copenhagen. Maybe you recall the quote from Hamlet, to be or not to be, or as they say down in Newhound, two beers or not two beers. <laughs> the new uh, printed press of Denmark store paper. Now it's being redesigned by a Japanese architect. Uh, it will be luxury private apartments. When they are done, they will be the most expensive apartments in Copenhagen. There will also be a swimming pool in there where you can swim both indoors and outdoors in the water from the Copenhagen Harbor. We are very proud of that. We have one of the cleanest harbors in the world. So you will probably see people swimming in it all over the place. Uh, papir øen herinde, uh, som I er i gang med at blive omdannet til luksus. Okay. Nice. You can see it from the other side in a minute. Try to see if you can guess what it was used for originally. Now it's apartments, but it had a very particular purpose in the past. So see if you can figure that out. You'll get a clue in a minute when we sail past. What did they do in there? Did you figure it out? Huh? Shipbuilding? Ship repair? Yep. Yeah, you're close. They repaired torpedo boats in there. It's oh. the old, it's called the torpedo holes. The torpedo hallerne, hvor de reparerede torpedo skibe i gamle dage. Cool. They, the, the torpedo ships would sail in there and get repaired. These old wooden sheds are from the beginning of the um, 19th century. Back then we were at war with the Brits. And the Brits, they used to come over and attack Copenhagen again and again. They stole all our navy ships. They set Copenhagen on fire, whatnot. So in here we kept cannon boats. And you notice that we will notice that they, they slope towards the water, so it was easy to pull out the cannon boats really fast when they had to come to the defense of Copenhagen. So today these sheds are national heritage, they're part of Danish history, so they're used for other purposes, but we try to, uh, to keep them uh, in the expression they originally had. Herover den anden side, det er, der, det er bagsiden af Christian. Everything. We do the opposite. So this is the smallest hotel of Copenhagen. It has one room. It's called Kite Hotel. Um, so 
that's the way we like to brag in Copenhagen. And uh, the zone uh, in front of you uh, is uh, named after Christian VI, who established this function. The cannons are fired twice a day, at sunrise and at sunset, to tell the ships in the harbor when to raise and when to lower the flag. Now there's a slight problem with that, because as you might have noticed, the sun rises quite early in the morning when it's summer in Scandinavia. And uh, the royal family and other prominent people living in the area, they were a little bit fed up with being woken by, up by cannons at 4 o'clock in the morning. So a few years ago it was decided just that the sun never rises in Copenhagen before 8 in the morning. So just to be the home of the company, children playing with Legos. Så skal vi ind igen fra Kons kanal igen, hvor der er mange lave bruger, så I skal blive stødende og passe på hovedet. This museum is dedicated to the Danish sculptor Bertel Torvalds. He was accepted to the Royal Academy of Fine Arts when he was only 11. 
He lived for 40 years of his life in Rome and he traveled all over Europe, both producing uh, statues himself and collecting artwork from other artists. His own works and his collection of art is exhibited in here and he's also buried in there, so it's also a mausoleum for him. If you look at the fresco on the side of the building, the first one here on the corner, you see a picture of two men shaking hands. That's Bertel Torvaldsen, the, the sculptor, and to the people of Copenhagen. If you look ahead, you see a humble little statue of a fisherman's wife to commemorate the hardworking women who used to be here in all kinds of weather. Behind the statue of the fisherman's wife, you see a larger green statue of a man on a horse. That is Bishop Absalon, who for centuries we believed was the founder of Copenhagen. He did build the first castle here, where Christian Sport Castle is today. He built his castle in 1167. Now, when they, five years ago, were digging out for the metro station that you see right here, they found remains from the Stone Age and the Viking era. So that was before Bishop, Bishop Absalon. So at the moment, they are rewriting the Danish history book, books, and he, he has lost the honor of being the founder of Copenhagen because of a bloody metro station. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.